In this video, we are going to understand something about a brief history of English language teaching. The history of English language teaching ELT starts from the 15th century. It has been divided into three stages. The first stage is from the beginning of the 15th century to the end of 18th century. The second stage is during the 19th century and the third and modern stage is from the beginning of the 20th century to the present age. In Europe, during the end of 14th century, French gave way to English language and schools in Europe started teaching English. Educational institutions in Europe taught English along with the other modern and classical languages. During the 19th century, due to various factors, a rapid development of ELT was made both in Europe and British colonies. During this period, the English-speaking population increased to several billions from the previous few millions. English became the major language of England during the region of King Henry IV. Later, during the 15th century, King Henry V proclaimed English as the official language and by the end of the 15th century, law books were made available in English language. Even during this period, grammar schools in Europe taught in Latin, though the people were communicating in English. English textbooks including grammar textbooks were not available until 17th century. Following the Latin text, teachers used dialogue forms related to everyday life in question answer style to teach English. By the end of the 16th century, four reformationists from Spain and Italy and large number of French people arrived in England. This unexpected scenario encouraged educationists in England to bring out ELT textbooks to teach English to non-English speaking Europeans. Among these immigrants, there were teachers who knew English and some of them started teaching English language to the immigrants from Europe. These teachers would be considered the first non-native English language teachers. Knowledge of English helped many of the migrant community to improve their career, career prospects and business. Jacques Bellat prepared and published two English textbooks, The English Schoolmaster and Familiar Dialogues from 1580 to 1590. These textbooks were in an everyday dialogue format. Publication of these textbooks encouraged many others to bring out ELT books and notable among them was the French schoolmaster 1972 brought out by Holy Ban which was dependent upon by teachers for several decades. After the return of Italians and other Europeans to their respective countries by the end of the 16th century, ELT in England temporarily came to a standstill. English language lovers could not stop teaching of Latin and Greek in English in schools of England. During this period, John Webb, who gave prominence for pictures for teaching and J. A. Comness, who gave less importance to grammar, published ELT textbooks. Interest in English philosophy and literature prompted people from many European countries like Germany, Denmark and Netherlands to start learning English. French Revolution and Restoration also are some of the reasons for people to show interest in English language. Also, plays of Shakespeare and poems of romantic poets accepted many Europeans to English language learning. By 18th century, the Russians started learning the English language in Russia. Michael Bemsky brought out a English language, brought out a translation of practical English grammar to Russian language, prompting others to do the same. In 1797, John Miller published The Tutor or a New English and Bengali work from Bengal, India. This book 
can be considered as the first non-European ELT book. In the European secondary schools, English was taught as an additional language and ELT was called TEFL, Teaching English as a Foreign Language. English was a special subject and the teaching methods of Latin and Greek helped ELT teachers. With the launching of grammar translation method in Germany in 1780s, new ELT theories and approaches like Berlitz schools for meeting the specific needs were implemented by different countries in their institutions. Too many methods made it necessary for reforms in the ELT sector. Scientific study of language learning, psychology of language learning paved the way for theoretical foundation of the language learning pedagogy. In British colonies, English was taught and ELT was called TESL that is teaching English as a second language. In these countries, England wanted its colony citizens to learn English in addition to their mother tongue. This was for employing the native people who had good knowledge of English to work in government departments. In colonies like Canada, USA, Australia and New Zealand, English became the official language. But in countries like India, Burma, Sri Lanka, etc., they ruled over the natives and here the native people were given education which included English language teaching. In addition to the government initiative, Christian missionaries also engaged in importing education to the natives. European knowledge, culture, literature, etc. were imparted to the colony citizens in addition to ELT. The next stage of ELT that is from the beginning of 20th century to the present can be divided into three phases. First phase is from 1900 to 1946 after the Second World War. The second phase from 1946 to 1970 and the third phase from 1972 to the present. During the second phase of the growth of English language, the term ELT was gener- generally accepted. Incorporation of applied linguistics, added resources and some scienti- scientific base to ELT. New learning theories, approaches and methods of teaching made it necessary for designing the target language learning techniques. In the beginning of the second phase, ELT institutes along with BBC, British Council and published of ELT books were located only in London city. This scenario changed with the arrival of a large number of immigrants from as well British colonies to United Kingdom during 1960 because of its economic prosperity. It was a great task to teach the children of these immigrants. During this period, ELT was called English for Immigrants. By 1970, it was renamed as TESL, Teaching English as a Second Language. The acronym ELT came into being after the publication of British Council Journal English Language Teaching in 1946. In due course, English language teachers' training programs were started to make the ELT more effective. Hornby's writing on situational approaches brought ELT's focus again on classroom which until then depended more on theory because of the influence of applied linguistics. The establishment of association of recognized English language school RLS is 1960 made ELT a full time profession and RLS was a source for ELT resources. People from non English speaking countries started learning English for going to English speaking countries for higher education. Conferences conducted by various associations, including RLS, helped the EFL. English as a foreign language and ESL, English as a second language teachers to share their views, knowledge and experiences. The requirement of English language was different for people and this necessitated 
to birth of English for special purposes in 1970s. Audiolingual method for teaching were introduced in France and from 1960s film scripts and tab recorders were used to teach English. Later ELT professionals started using television also for effective teaching. Communication is one of the primary purposes behind language teaching which greatly influenced ELT during the third phase. The preparation of curriculum and textbooks evaluation was based on this premise. Initiation of new language learning theories led to the communicative language teaching CLT which became the most acceptable language teaching method for ELT professionals. New textbooks became a necessity because both learners and teachers wanted activities related to real life experiences and communication. Two categories of ELT language learners were identified by Van Eyck 1980. The first group was general threshold level who had a basic need of English language. The teaching materials and teaching methods should help them achieve it. The second category of learners required English for special purposes ESP, various branches originated from ESP like English for academic purposes EAP, English for occupation purposes EOP, English for science and technology EST etc. This development made ELT professionals to bring out large number of textbooks meeting specific requirements of different learners. Some of them were English in physical science, English in physical science, Allen and Widowson, 1974, Nucleus, M. Bats and T. Dudley Evans, 1976, which had a value in general science. These teaching materials helped ELT to be more flexible and the focus was on language skills than grammar. In addition, British Council developed an English language proficiency test called English Language Testing Service ELTS which was later changed to IELTS. Some ELT professionals wanted teachers and learners to stick to basics and to look for alternative learning strategies in 1976. Earl W. Stevick published a book, Memory, Meaning and Method. Stevick wanted ELT professionals to relook into earlier strategies. Stevick called these previous methods as humanistic methods, and they are Hatechno's Silent Way, Currents, Community Language Learning, Assets, Total Physical Response, and Luzan House, Suggestopedia. Stevick used this term in his book, Humanism in Language Teaching, 1990. Some of the later ELT the theoreticians are S.D. Krashen, N.S. Prabhu. Thank you.